I am delighted to co-facilitate this conversation today on the importance of fostering the Amazon's bioeconomy with my colleague, Nicole Schwab, who leads the forum's work on nature-based solutions and the OneTrillionTrees.org platform. We're joined today by a group of very special guests that, we'll introduce, that we will introduce throughout the session. The Amazon has the potential to become the world's most important bioeconomy, delivering jobs and benefits for local communities and harnessing innovation while restoring and conserving ecosystems. It is home to more than 34 million people of very diverse backgrounds and holds 10% of the world's known biodiversity. It also accounts for 20% of the world's remaining forest areas. However, ecosystem degradation and deforestation, including illegal activities, continue to pose major socioeconomic and environmental threats. Therefore, a new bioeconomy paradigm for the region has never been more urgent. Regional leadership has made important strides. Efforts are being led by the Amazon countries, by the Amazon Cooperation Treaty Organization, also through the Letitia Pact Process and Action Plan, by the Inter-American Development Bank, and of course, by local communities, NGOs, researchers, international cooperation, and businesses pioneering sustainable approaches. I believe it could be fair to say that we're seeing a new momentum to promote change for the sustainability of the Amazon. For the past two years, from the World Economic Forum, we have been convening a dialogue series on the Amazon. We have focused on raising awareness, explored paths to catalyze sustainable resources and finances, and reflected on the role of businesses in this context. Today, we're very excited to spotlight a critical aspect of this equation, the need to foster the Amazon's bioeconomy by promoting ecopreneurship and innovation across the region. Transitioning to a healthy standing forest bioeconomy offers to new opportunities to preserve and restore the Amazon rainforest while providing viable alternatives to its communities. Agroforestry solutions, for instance, can reestablish the forest ecological functions and expand the region's supply of timber and non-timber forest products, such as cacao, azai, Brazil nut, and essential oils. Voluntary carbon markets are seeing skyrocketed demand of 280% over the past 12 months, and other sector services and innovations also represent great potential. This is why we're all so pleased to share today the results of the Amazon Bioeconomy Challenge, which will be launched with our OneTrillionTrees.org and Uplink platforms, and in collaboration with key partners to support innovative bioeconomy projects that are locally anchored and help conserve and restore the Amazon ecosystem while delivering social and economic benefits for local communities. As we discuss today, these efforts to build multi-stakeholder partnerships for the Amazon's bioeconomy requires efforts and cooperation at many levels. To explore this and envision actions for the region to pave the way for an accelerated transition to a sustainable bioeconomy, we have a stellar group of guests. Quisiera comenzar invitando a la Secretaria General de la Organización del Tratado de Cooperación Amazónica, Alexandra Moreira. La organización dirigida por Alexandra es una organización intergubernamental. Oh, I would like to start with inviting the Secretary General, the Amazon Cooperation Treaty Organization. It's, been, it's, a comp it's a formed by the eight countries that have signed the Treaty of the Amazons in 1988. The HCTO gives a very ample promotion of the South-South cooperation in the Treaty of the uh, Amazons cooperation with political, diplomatic and technical efforts creating synergy between a diversity of actors uh, welcome, Alexander. Could you please share with us uh, some an update on the recent bilateral uh, 
agreement that have signed all the countries of the area for the protection of the Amazon, the well-being of their inhabitants, and the promotion of the biodiversity. Yes, thank you very much, Marisa. It's a very, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you again to the World Economic Forum to be here. I would like also to uh, send my greeting to the Vice President of Brazil, Mr. Hamilton Moran, and also to the other panelists. I would like to start very briefly with a light uh, report of IPCC that confirms the very big vulnerability of our area. We are uh, hear um, a testimony. This is a t testimony of what is happening in the area, the frequency, the uh, floods in all the area and the changes of climate. Uh, this uh, IPCC report has a great importance for us uh, for the protection for the protection of the area. And when we are talking about um, really our forest of the Amazon, really the climatic change of the different uh, actors are uh, causing Trans, uh, ecological transformation, which are very uh, complicated on a very large scale, that could generate also uh, larger changes uh, due to the change of our humid or wet, you know, uh, um, um, forest to uh, dry. Uh, forest. Uh, before this uh, news and this large complexity that we have to face today, the eight uh, countries that are members of uh, uh, the uh, ACTO have approved after long negotiations uh, two very important programs. One, which is on the sustainable uh, management of uh, the um, forest. And, uh, you know, it's for a shared uh, vision, a very strong, you know, impulse to our system, the devlo development of all this, uh, the, of the bioeconomy, the implementation of action for uh, the su uh, sustainable management of uh, the uh, forest, uh, fighting against uh, fires, you know, the protection of indigenous people, among many others. We should not forget that there are about 48 million people that live in our region and that need, you know, improve their livelihood with a better equality, with lots of uh, more productivity. This vision for this country, you know, it's not opposed to have a controlled model of development that would understand the largest region uh, that has uh, the Amazon is the forest, you know, which is a, a really a, a, that will enable them to uh, keep this a system of that generates rains in this rate forest that we have in our region, thanks to the function of the forest and also, you know, this heritage that we have in the area. For this, it's necessary to have new technologies, also uh, the applied science, but also a large gathering of finance resources, public and private, that will foster biodiversity to have large uh, possibilities in a sustainable ways and to add value to the small and medium companies initiatives to help the cities and their people. So this is the power of our countries and, you know, and help our Amazon region, you know. So as you, as you've said, this economic uh, potential of many areas, cacao, acai, many which have a large uh, nutritional value can generate new models with a lot of productivity. Cacao is a great, cocoa is a great example in the Amazon area. It's very diverse in the world, in, in its genetics, as species. It's a produce for many of our countries, Ecuador, Bolivia, Brazil, and that means means for us uh, of you know to have a high quality cocoa that requires a largest invention more technology so that would 
enable us to have a very productive industry and uh, that will protect our uh, environment. I would like to make also a reference to acai from Brazil, which is very important in the production. More than 350,000 people in the state of Pará uh, are working in this uh, agriculture. So this new model enables us to work with the Amazon people and the indigenous people that participate in all this work really the future of the Amazon will depend on maintaining its natural equilibrium for these uh, development models thanks to the uh, di sustainable uh, diversity, thanks to agroforestal system restoring all the areas that have been deforested and that are today large extensions that in many cases have been abandoned and that could be really tapped on thanks to uh, very high value new uh, productions. Thanks to also many actions to fall these uh, degraded areas associated with local industries to for the uh, value chain. So that's how we are heading. We need to work, but definitely, uh, you know, our great. We have to 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 change from the destruction economy to the economy of uh, the knowledge of uh, the nature. Thank you, Marisol. Thank you very much, Alexandra. We are very excited to hear about this new progress, uh, this new consensus, consensus that uh, all the countries of uh, the area have reached. So really wonderful to you. Now I would like to invite the Vice President of Brazil, the Excellency Hamilton Moran, Brazil's Amazon Council for coordinated and comprehensive policy on action for the protection and sustainable development of the Amazon. Señor Vicepresidente, bienvenido. We had a very encouraging conversation a few months ago. Amazonie. Nous avons eu un échange très intéressant il y a quelques mois. Pourriez-vous nous parler des facteurs les plus importants? s'agissant de la stratégie brésilienne pour relever les défis. To foster the Amazon's bioeconomy. This is a timely and important discussion. Bioeconomy enterprise in the Amazon offers an opportunity to strengthen and expand business that combine environmental protection, economic growth, and social inclusion. Our government has put forward a comprehensive effort to protect, preserve, and develop the Amazon region with the reestablishment of the National Council of the Amazon, of the Legal Amazon, in February last year, which I have had the honor to chair. From the outset, the Amazon Council acknowledged the need to step up the fight against illegal deforestation and other environmental crimes, while also shaping a sustainable development plan for the region. There are five strategic policy goals guiding the work of the Council. First, to enhance command and control operations in the Amazon with a focus on the fight against illegal deforestation and the strengthening of federal environmental agencies. Second, to promote the regularization of land tenure and economic ecological zoning, which are necessary steps for more effective monitoring, control, and development policies. Third, to leverage public and private financial resources, including through the payment for environmental service. Fourth, to integrate information systems of different governmental agencies to ensure greater efficiency, transparency, accountability, and better governance. And fifth, to foster bioeconomy and innovation, allowing even the most remote areas of the Amazon 
to generate wealth and create jobs for its population. We believe the public sector's role is to strengthen the rule of law and to provide incentives, building and enabling a business-friendly environment for private actors to generate value, jobs, and creative solutions. In the past two years, Brazil has repeatedly employed the armed force in support of environmental agencies to fight illegal deforestation and related crimes. Fortunately, we have managed to, reserve, to reverse the acceleration of deforestation that started in 2012. Recent data from the DITER alert system indicate that deforestation rates fell by 32% in August this year, in comparison to numbers from August last year. Data from September this year also indicate a reduction of deforestation and forest fires when compared to the same months of last year. The government is strengthening our environmental agencies, improving monitoring systems, and accelerating land regularization. These measures contribute to the effective implementation of our environmental law framework in particular, our forest code, thus enabling bioeconomy to thrive in the region. Regrettably, efforts in favor of the sustainable development of the Brazilian Amazon have been hindered for many years because of a stalemate between those that see the forest as an obstacle to economic growth and those that believe the private sector is an enemy to the forest's integrity. We are no longer hostage to this false dichotomy. Bioeconomy efforts have been a priority in our agenda, taking into account the private sector as an indispensable partner for its implementation. That's what I had to say for now. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you very much for that update. In, in your opinion, how can public-private partnerships support these objectives in Brazil? while ensuring that initiatives and value are clearly aligned with local sustainability objectives? Oh, Marcel, the partnership between public and private stakeholders has the potential to channel investments into bioeconomy efforts, contributing to the sustainable use of biodiversity and making a difference in the lives of thousands of people. We are aware that governments cannot replace the private sector's resourcefulness. Companies, investors, producers, and entrepreneurs must take the lead to promote a new cycle of green and inclusive growth in the Amazon. Public and private actors acknowledge the market potential for products and service arising from the sustainable use of forest resource. Existing value chains for food products, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals, for instance, can be improved or expanded even in the short term. Degraded areas offer opportunity for new business models, combining the production of fo forest products with financial incentives for reforestation and ecosystem restoration. Brazil already counts with a network of research institutions dedicated to Amazon issues. It is important to stress that we, as government, have limited capacity to channel large sums to research and development, particularly in the post-pandemic scenario. In this context, it is crucial that private business invest on a knowledge-based bioeconomy and support innovative research activities in the Amazon. The alignment of financial incentives will accelerate the modernization and expansion of sustainable value chains in the Amazon. The Brazilian financial sector has taken major steps in this direction. The three largest private banks of Brazil, 
have launched a joint initiative providing great impulse for the bioeconomy agenda in the Amazon. At the regional level, the Inter-American Development Bank has launched the Amazon Initiative last March with a bioeconomy fund to leverage private sector engagement in the Amazon. Brazil has supported this initiative from the beginning, and I hope that Mr. Juan Pablo Bonilla, who is with us today, will bring us some good news on that front. Innovation is key to achieving the change that are needed to boost local enterprise. In this regard, I also look forward to hearing the initiatives selected by the Amazon Bioeconomy Challenge, launched by Uplink and WEF. It is critical to scale up innovative projects and to build bridges between local entrepreneurs and international investors. It is quite inspiring to learn about the results and the potential for promoting bioeconomy in the Amazon. Two weeks ago, I traveled with a group of ambassadors, including among them my good friend Maria Alejandra from ACTO, to visit several projects and companies in the state of Pará, the most populated in the Brazilian Amazon. I would like just to mention that the state of Pará is three times the size of Germany. They learned about initiatives dedicated to sustainable mining, renewable energies, public health, environmental conservation, and the great potential for bioeconomy investments. We visit a new cacao improvement factory in the municipality of Altamira, almost 400 kilometers from the capital, Belém. It is a private investment, the first of its kind in that region, and it follows the highest standards of quality including ESG standards. The factory is adding value to local bioeconomy production, creating good paying jobs and promoting reforestation in the municipalities with the highest rates of deforestation in the region. This example shows that governments have the main responsibility in the protection of the environment in our countries, but the sustainable development particularly in the Amazon, will only succeed with greater engagement from the private sector. Thank you very much for your attention. Muito obrigado, Sr. Vice-Presidente. Estoy segura que Juan Pablo... I am sure that Juan Pablo has got lots of great news. He is the... Uh, the the um, climate the manager he's the climate change sustainable development sector in the inter-american development bank why investments are so important in this uh, sector and what are the aims the clear uh, objectives uh, that we have to take into account uh, thinking of an entrepreneurship towards a new economy Thank you very much, Marisola. Thank you very much to you and Nicole. Thank you to have invited the bank to be part of this effort, to this very important panel. Thank you. I would like to send my greetings to all the members of the Palo that are here and also to the President Moran, also special greetings. I would like to start from the initiative, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the Vice President of Brazil has just said uh, last month of March uh, during the Assembly of the Bug, we launch uh, the uh, initiative for a sustainable development for the territories with four pillars that uh, are what exactly what Maria Alexandra was uh, talking about, thinking of a new model of uh, development for the Amazon Basin. The bank initiative, the four pillars on which we are going to work are first, uh, the economy which gathers all of us, and the second pillar is all that part of uh, development of sustainable agriculture and uh, also uh, cattle 
all that we can do everything uh, well also uh, for the forest it's very important also the human capital all the investment that we have to do for health education jobs creation and the fourth which is very important in sustainable um, um, infrastructure with the connectivity which is going to be a uh, very important also sustainable cities as uh, what uh, Alessandra was saying you know acknowledging the importance of human capital in the Amazon basing this uh, as we were saying the uh, directory of our uh, bank uh, approve uh, $24,000 million for that for uh, financing the region and to make uh, uh, investment plans in uh, the Amazon re region. We are starting to do it and we, you know, we're working with the Ministry of Finance. Uh, our members, our governors are part of these um, ministries. Uh, the fund of my economy that the vice president mentioned, that was an idea from the uh, Brazilian government and supported by many countries around the Amazon. We have been progressing. We are going to um, presented during the meeting on the 4th of October is going to be extremely important to work with the development bank to, uh, you know, uh, give them access to this question of economy. And the first point is uh, working with uh, Peru, with FIDE. We are working also with the uh, Bank of uh, Development in Brazil, Development Bank of Brazil. And this is extremely important. We are going to work with OTCA with uh, ACTO, and we had very important compensations on that point. Uh, we have to set all the frameworks, especially in the economy of the Amazon countries. That's very important. How to start working in the sustainable cities in the Amazon, and that's exactly answering the question you asked, you know, talking about entrepreneurship. And this proposal, we have very important resources for entrepreneurship. We are going to work with this lab uh, that is starting to work a lot with you, and I would like to thank them, you know, uh, on behalf of BizLove. This is uh, the platform One Trillion Trees, which is extremely important too. We will have also very important resources to work with uh, local economies and have an entrepreneurship so that local uh, economies, as uh, the Vice President of, of uh, Brazil said, be our partners for everything we start. We are starting to have a small fund, a multi-donor fund to pay for a forestry we are rather advanced here and to coordinate the whole you know this whole uh, uh, set talking about sustainability the 2025 vision that we have for these five years to come are taking into account uh, uh, climate uh, climate change uh, you know sustainability with the impact of the pandemic and thanks to the leadership of the president of the bank this 2025 vision is becoming the central uh, really um, uh, a pie, it's pivotal for uh, the uh, region and for that uh, we are all you know we are starting to open a new uh, unit in uh, the bank which is called called the Amazon coordination unit to be able to you know progress on these four pillars I mentioned and to you know start all the uh, financial uh, mechanism and we hope it will start uh, working very very quickly you know it's all entrepreneurial you know starting starting you know this uh, new vision we see there are, there is a great interest from the large funds you know to invest due to the climate change uh, uh, urgency emergency that we have but we see that all the banks are part of that and I was very pleased to see that the 5 of September the day of the Amazon there was a very important article of the three most important banks in uh, in Brazil and I know that's something they are really working with the president Moran of its uh, vision of the private banking in Brazil. And these are very important uh, signs that we can see. But what can we do with small companies, small little businesses that are starting in that world to get uh, support uh, from the beginning? You know, they are very important entities that uh, are starting to have this nexus with uh, the Amazon, with uh, uh, also uh, sustainable uh, development fund in Manaus and several, and many others also. But what can we do all together to support all these, uh, you know, startups? Uh, the uh, bank has started a fund which is called Red Regenerate to support these small startups. And the proposal that I mentioned about uh, bioeconomy, we will have spe specific resources to be able to work on that issue. Thank you very much. Juan Pablo,
Thank you, thank you, uh, Juan Pablo. This is uh, contribution is really very important from uh, really the Inter American Development Bank, uh, and that help us very much to to really keep on work and looking for this uh, sustainable development in this very important region. Very key aspects and will lead a very interesting discussion bringing in the ecopreneurs that have been selected for the uplink challenge. Nicole, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marisol. I'd like to turn the conversation now a little bit to the private sector and the role of the private sector and this new a generation of entrepreneurs whom we call ecopreneurs. These are entrepreneurs who are putting restoration at the core of their business model. And as the vice president rightly mentioned, we have to move away from this dichotomy between conservation and development. And we're seeing very clearly that it is possible to create restorative businesses. And we will hear from two of those very soon. We also want to uh, um, look a little bit at, at the incentives and the business case for the private sector more broadly for multinational companies. At the global level, today with Wanti.org, we have just announced the first 24 pledges from 24 global companies who are pledging to conserve, restore and grow 2.5 billion trees over the next decade in over 50 countries. So we're seeing there's a lot of traction, there's a lot of interest, and this is clearly no longer uniquely a CSR or philanthropic opportunity, but also moving to the core of um, a business strategy and, and risk management. So to discuss this, I would like to start uh, with you, Roberto Marquez. You are the CEO and executive chairman of the board at Natura & Co in Brazil. Your company has issued a very comprehensive sustainability plan, Commitment to Life. Can you tell us more about this and about your perspective on the sustainable bioeconomy in the Amazon and what will be needed for us to get there? Sure. First, Nicole, thank you. Thank you, Marisol, for the invitation to the distinctive panelists. Uh, a pleasure to be here. A special shout out to our Vice President uh, Mourão. Vice President of Brazil, not only for your leadership, Vice President, but also really, you know, inspiring us in terms of how we needed to really come together between private sector and public sector to face such an important uh, topic. Uh, I would start saying that um, in our mind, you know, the, the bioeconomy in the Amazon region is just a must. Um, you know, this is one of the important pillars last year when we announced our 2030 sustainability vision, you know, we divided in three pillars. Uh, one of them talks about, you know, uh, fighting the climate crisis and protecting the Amazon, which we're gonna talk more. But the second talks about diversity and inclusion and how to defend human rights. And the third one talks about, you know, embrace circularity and regeneration. In particular, regarding the Amazon region, we think that it, it's super important that we embrace size-based targets for biodiversity. And, and Natura actually has been working in the Amazon region for over 20 years. Uh, and during this period, I think, you know, we estimate that we've been able to preserve over 2 million hectares of the forest, right? But uh, the, the key thing about that preservation is the collaboration and work with the local communities. This is really also another must. We cannot ignore, and I think Marisol, you mentioned that the importance of the local communities and the population in the region. They are the guardians uh, of the forest itself. And, and therefore it's super important to, to work with them. Uh, this whole dilemma or this uh, uh, aspect that it's impossible to drive economic uh, development preservation, we think that we need it absolutely to demystify that. And that are plenty of examples, not only within Natura, but many, many companies. Uh, Natura, for example, has a, a manufacturing site in the Parai state that the vice president was talking about in the municipality uh, uh, of Benevides. And with a, with, a, with a technology and innovation center there, we've been able to really work with the local communities to harvest some of the ingredients that has some very interesting properties in terms of hydration in terms of moisturization. And one of them was mentioned also in this panel, acai, which is a fruit from the Amazon palm tree. 
And it's a great biodiversity ingredient that we use in one of our very popular lines in Brazil called Natura Ecos. And from the oils of the seeds, we can provide a lot of benefits in terms of our products. And at the same time, you know, a sharing, you know, health and helping those communities work with, uh, with us to create a sustainable development uh, for them. So we believe that, you know, embracing uh, uh, science-based targets, uh, really thinking about biodiversity, including the local communities into, into any, any of the decisions in, in how we really involve them, but really, you know, demystifying this notion that there is no sustainable development without you know, a deforestation. It's something that uh, we believe is false, that we need absolutely to uh, prove uh, that our waste uh, through, again, the bioeconomy uh, to create a very uh, 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 sound uh, uh, Amazon region, uh, not only for Brazil and for Latin America, but for the world, because the Amazon region is such an important element of the biodiversity globally and worldwide. Thank you, Roberto, and uh, thank you also. Your company is clearly an example showing us uh, what's possible, and we hope to see many more large uh, companies sh following this lead and science-based targets for biodiversity. On the topic of working with local communities and, and ecopreneurship, I'd like to now turn to the first of our two ecopreneurs that we have on the panel who are both part of the winning cohort of the Amazon Bioeconomy Challenge, which we launched as a partnership between 1T org and uplink um, so very exciting to hear from you and i'd like to turn first to you sofia rubio you are the founder and ceo of a company called shiwi in peru and your tagline is very inspiring um, healthy conscious wild can you tell us more about shiwi about your work and and the impact that you're having but also about the challenges that you think need to be overcome if we are to achieve this vision of a standing forest bioeconomy Hey, buenas tardes a todos. Yes, Gracias. good afternoon to all of you. Thank you very much for inviting us uh, to this wonderful panel. As uh, Nico said, uh, Shiwi is a company that sells very high quality products with a uh, value added, which is very Im important in protected uh, natural areas. And, you know, we, we just created just like that uh, uh, to help to support economically uh, the preservation and conservation, just like Roberto was saying, you know, it's what's happening in these uh, in these areas. And these are one of many examples. Uh, we work with uh, chestnuts. Chestnuts has uh, several names around this world. And I would like uh, the they, they start to call them, you know, the Amazon chestnut instead of uh, giving it uh, so many names, you know. So we have uh, working with Brazil, Bolivia, Peru. We are working under uh, one single name, you know, this Amazon chestnut. But for us, it's been um, very complex, you know, to have this uh, small you know, Amazon startup, because there is a lot of education to do with consumers. We have to share lots of information because to start, it's a nut which has a commercial value, but no one knows that it's wild with lots of ecological requirements. And therefore, I think, you know, that it's a non-timber forest product, you know, it's, it's, it's this, what it says, you know, that helps us to generate resource, economical resources, you know, that are based on the forest, on biodiversity. And I think with the different values than the economy with the largest distribution along the supply chain with a lot of participation at the local level, we are harvesters, we participate participate in the added value of the commercial commercialization of the products we can have uh, you know small large or medium economies but they can be very different uh, we can have a good matching between natural conservation and uh, market strength and that's exactly what we're looking for Thank you very much, uh, Sofia. So turning now to Ricardo Calderon you are the executive director of Agro Solidaria from Colombia. 
And I'd like to ask you the same question. Um, you're working on agroforestry systems uh, in Colombia. Can you tell us a little bit more about your work, about the impact you're having, and also about the challenges that you see that need to be overcome for you to be able to scale your activities? Hola, eh, mi nombre es... Hello, so my name is Ricardo Andres Calderón, and I'm really very happy to be with you and greet you in this uh, meeting. And I would like to thank you for this uh, uh, very nice invitation. And uh, Agro Solidario Florencia is an association of producing that, uh, you know, enhance uh, the conservation of forest uh, with uh, non-timber uh, products to uh, transform them in high value uh, products uh, in our conservation forests. We've called them, you know, uh, um, Amazon, and cosmetic um, um, forest. Uh, we can, uh, you know, we can do the conservation of more than 1,000 hectares, uh, which in which participate more than 250 families that are part of our local communities. Uh, more than half, you know, 50% of them are victims of the armed conflict that we uh, have in the area. And, and so I'm extremely proud to tell you that uh, we are. We've been elected in Natura Brazil as the best uh, Colombian producers, and this, you know, makes our reality, makes our dream a reality to generate uh, financial uh, resources to our uh, families. Um, you know, little startups just like ours, like Le One, we have a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, issues, we need to have uh, more people, more persons, more communities get to know us, can, uh, you know, participate uh, to uh, uh, obtain our products and buy them and can also choose them. Uh, and, uh, you know, we need to have this uh, uh, development uh, uh, you know, to have a more agile system, to be more competitive. And that's the only way for us to uh, ensure that our local communities could um, make a living and see in the forest conservation a viable. Thank you very much, uh, Ricardo, and uh, very inspiring to hear your work. And it's also great to see that we already have an example on this panel of a partnership and how such partnerships can really help to scale um, some of these efforts from, from the ecopreneurs. I'd like to turn back to you, uh, Juan Pablo, and we're very grateful for the excellent collaboration with IDB Lab uh, on this challenge. And, and of course, you mentioned before um, how important it is to spur this movement of ecopreneurship. And you've, we've just heard uh, from Ricardo about some of the challenges of you know, access to market, of um, being able to, to scale. There's also the financial issue that you mentioned before. From your perspective, how can we continue to support ecopreneurship and, and this movement in the Amazon and help build capacity, help encourage more young people also to pursue um, this trajectory? Thank you, Nicole. Eh, primero de todo, felicitaciones a... Well, first of all, I would like to greet the two uh, presenters, uh, Sofia and uh, Ricardo. I wish, you know, I wish you well for everything you, you're doing and listening to them. I can see the importance of this alliance and this work that we're doing together because uh, the first, these are, you know, sort of value chains. Uh, it's beautiful that we're starting just the first of it and it's uh, the first uh, eco uh, company uh, that we've done, uh, and that's uh, Roberto Natura that has helped the, the country. And and Sofia, I think she's showing uh, the importance of the chestnut uh, for several countries in the Amazon uh, basin as an export uh, uh, product. We are working, we're starting to BitLab regenerate, for example, we are seeing, uh, you know, as I was saying, that was part of our, of our proposal of climate fund. And I think that these funds, uh, Nicole, will enable thanks you know on that based on that challenge that you're launching we could give some examples like this to see what kind of support this lab could give on this you know in closing this gap so the effort i would ask you to do is like to help them to close that gap to to 
you know connect them thanks to this lab and people like you you know we can sort of link together and also sophia we're starting to uh, launch uh, uh, an operation with kofia in peru that would be very important to put you in contact with all the team that is starting all these projects so that we could see that companies like yours startup like like yours could really uh, be skilled i think that uh, what we are getting with the platform that you've launched is exactly you know what we're doing building up this uh, ecopreneurship you know you know with all these companies uh, see how we can support them so that the dreams that they were talking about uh, will you know roberto become really a real thank you juan pablo um maybe just another very quick round of, of questions before we close uh, roberto i'd like to turn back to you and I mean, you're, you're working with Ricardo, I'm sure you're working with many more um, ecopreneurs. Um, what, in your opinion, can the international business community do to really help scale um, ecopreneurship to the level that we need if we're really going to accelerate this transition towards the bioeconomy? Bio yeah, so thank you, Nicole. So again, first is, you know, connecting with people like yeah, and Ricardo is, uh, is for me is always inspiring to hear those stories of entrepreneurships and and the the opportunity that you know the, the that we have as uh, uh, as society as private sector with the help from the financial community from uh, of course you know the, the public sector uh, so well represented here so it gives me confidence and hope that we have the solutions. We just need to make those connections, right? And, and make sure that we really embrace them and, and then connect with the right people, with the right entrepreneurs, uh, uh, as we, we heard the example from both uh, uh, Ricardo and, and Sofia. So listen, you know, for us, you know, we've been working with over, you know, 60 different communities in 17 countries, right? And, and, and touching and directly work with over 7,000 families. So the, the, the whole idea of this uh, ecosystem and the collaboration with the local communities and with the entrepreneurs in, in the areas, you know, this is, you know, this is the answer, right? We know that and, and, and then we're gonna be able to find the right solutions and how we preserve the forest and create a, in a sustainable development. You know, we talk about acai, again, you know, we, we partner on that specific one with a community called Cofruta, which was formed by 40 small scale farm, farming families, right? To, to really believing that it was possible to do something that uh, can be you know, valuable, added value, and at the same time, preserving the forest. So there's so many different examples. So I think the invitation to answer your question is for more companies to really get involved, you know, to really understand you know, what the biodiversity, the richness uh, of the Amazon region and connected with those entrepreneurs that, that, we, that we heard the examples and how we can really, you know, work in partnership with them, you know, uh, listening to them, you know, bringing them, you know, as part of the table. This is so important, again, that we, that we involve them into the decision process, into the development, in how we really need to think about it. So uh, on and on, again, it, it is exciting. It's inspiring to hear those beautiful examples here. And uh, we look forward to continuing to partner with them and expanding that and bringing other companies uh, uh, to really help us because you know we're gonna need a lot of help, right? Uh, uh, we need really a lot of companies and a lot of support financially from private sector, government to make sure that we can really get to the zero deforestation that we can get to really preserve the forest and the richness of the biodiversity in the region. Thank you, Roberto. Um, Sophia, one quick last question uh, to you. Um, we've been talking also earlier about innovation and technology. And of course, there are different kinds of innovation and there's also the important role that traditional knowledge plays, particularly um, along some of these non-timber forest products. Can you say a little bit about how you think about this topic uh, and maybe what some of your needs are or you know, how you work on, on the innovation and technology, but also on the local knowledge um, aspect and making sure that that is brought into the work that you do? Um, I think it's super important technology, really. 
the, and especially the technology that we can uh, see outside, you know, like the blockchain, for example, to generate, to be able to have uh, traceability, you know, in the value chain is extremely important. There is, there is a gap uh, re in capabilities, in connection and connectivity in the Amazon basin, which is, you know, we have to acknowledge it. Uh, the, 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 the Amazon basin is so large, so not all of it is completely connected. And there are very basic uh, technology that is required and uh, really it is needed for example when harvesting the fruit in the case of the chase nap which is not you know you know it's not a monoculture in small areas uh, where you get lots of resources no it's not the case uh, it's hectares of forests and uh, you could have uh, you know, all of them sort of scattered. So it's very important that we have uh, of that. And that's where innovation comes in to be able to connect all this food, for example, to extract them on a more sophisticated way, all these products that we would like to have, you know, uh, the different in ingredients. And therefore a lot of investigation is required in uh, the Amazon. You know, the Amazon by itself is sort of a natural laboratory. Uh, for that and i have the feeling that it's not only that uh, you know uh, very advanced and super advanced technology like the blockchain that we need but we request or we require also this basic technology for the people that are there you know for harvesting to improve you know uh, the the the, uh, the yield Thank you, Sophia. And maybe also uh, from you, Ricardo, um, it would be interesting to hear how you th you're thinking about technology innovation and how you're working um, also to integrate the, the traditional knowledge of the local communities that you work with. Es, es un reto. Es un reto trabajar. It's a challenge. It's a challenge, really, working in the Amazon and try, trying to have this chains that help us getting to specific markets that are you know they are more demanding and it's these challenges that require us to be in a permanent movement and sort of l'avant-garde of the of all these uh, requirements and that's where we are trying to ask from help from the government you know support uh, to sort of to scale up these technologies just like uh, Sophia was saying and to scale them up and give them to all the population in the local areas in uh, the Amazon basin and as I was saying at the beginning so that all the rest of the world look towards us at the Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, with those uh, great words, uh, we want um, more attention on, on the Amazon um, uh, and especially on those great models that you represent and that you have shared with us. So with that, I would like to turn back to Marisol um, for the last part of the panel. Marisol. Thank you very much, Nicole. Nos entusiasma muchísimo. We are very excited to hear about, uh, you know, uh, this commitment to companies like Sofia's and Roberta and other large company talking about these efforts to support the development of the Amazon basin. And uh, we are also excited to see this uh, enormous effort, effort that all these ecopreneurs do in the Amazon. And they are a very important part of these large efforts you know, as we've uh, acknowledged it, they are not only relevant for their local inhabitants and all the region, but they are also important for the rest of the world. Uh, so, you know, we are very excited, uh, thinking that we are uh, keeping on working with you. And now I would like to ask Alexandra very briefly that we are running against the clock. And Alexandra, you know, how do you see from your perspective, how could we support the ecopreneurship for the Amazon Basin, please. Thank you very much, Marisol. Well, exactly. That's a great example. It's a space where all government, uh, private banks, uh, uh, entrepreneurs, and different actors are converging. I think it's a great effort 
and that we really have to improve it. We have to really strengthen it. And I think all the countries are showing at the level of their government uh, full availability and openness for this kind of investment. They are collaborating from on different fronts. And I think that science in our region has progressed a lot in this last uh, 10 or 15 years. We have centers of uh, investigation, um, scientific production in different countries, Brazil, Peru, Colombia, and that, that needs to be applied. And for that, we need resources and innovation. And I agree when uh, Sofia and Ricardo says that uh, definitely, you know, they are promoting uh, these uh, examples. And thanks to them, we have several examples from all the different countries in the Amazon basin. But they say that they want to show the complexity that means investing and working in the Amazon. You ha we have to understand that the Amazon basin is a very complex system. And if uh, they, are, they are lacking from basic, basic uh, services of interconnectivity, and the government are working on that, but that does not mean that the companies, the private companies and the international ones cannot invest from now in the areas. What we are requesting is a larger support, a larger support, a larger cooperation in technology and to have this possibility to produce and uh, really scale up our uh, chains with this uh, traditional knowledge. And there we have a model that enable us to uh, preserve our forest and this fantastic ecosystem that produces so much humidity that we need to preserve it for the world equilibrium. Yeah, that is it's no doubt it's a very very complex system we have uh, we, we we need more actors to contribute to it and to you know uh, you know let's inform about this complexity and this technology that uh, ricardo and sofia was talking about you know it's extremely important in this post pandemic world we've been an accelerated transition towards this technology in order to scale up all the results as uh, Amazon, the, the Brazilian Council, a comprehensive government coordinating body. How can we enable the bioeconomy and the issues discussed today beyond specific projects and ensure a structural solutions are being adopted systemically beyond individual approaches? Senor Vice President. Well, Marcel, initially I would like to thank you, the WEF, for the opportunity to participate in this event and to hear from different stakeholders engaged in the fostering of the bioeconomy in the Amazon. Bioeconomy and the payment for environmental service are critical to the paradigmatic shift that will put an end to the predatory extraction of the forest resources. We must continue to engage local producers and communities on the debate, not only to learn about the difficulties they face, but also to be inspired by the achievements of the Amazon bioeconomy and its transformative potential for the region. The Amazon rainforest shelters the largest biodiversity reserve on the planet. We should explore this treasure in a sustainable and inclusive fashion. The forest can no longer be seen as an obstacle to development. The sustainable use of the biodiversity is the path to promote the knowledge economy model in the Amazon. We can only tread this path if we work together. Local communities, business people, governments, and research and financial institutions should be partners in this undertaking. You can rely on the National Council of the, Am the Legal Amazon to work for the fostering of bioeconomy. I call upon international institutions, investors and leaders from private and public sector to join us in this remarkable partnership. Thank you very much and have a good day. Muito obrigada, Senhor Vice-President. Now let's uh, offer Nicole Schwab uh, the floor for some closing remarks. Nicole, we would love to hear your reflections and about the next steps with the one trillion trees.org and the Uplink a platform. Please share with our audience the important announcement being shared right after this session. Thank you, Nicole. The floor is yours. 
Thank you, Marcel. So yes, first of all, uh, all I would like to invite all of you to, to watch this, the next session where we will announce the 15 ecopreneurs that were selected as part of the Amazon Bioeconomy Challenge. You've met two of them, and there are 13 more across the different countries, um, each and every one of them uh, with really impressive and inspirational projects. So on the part of Wanti.org, we will continue to um, serve as a platform for exchanges like this to bring together different stakeholders behind this vision of a sustainable bioeconomy for the Amazon. And with a particular focus on scaling non-timber forest product value chains. And we've heard some great examples today, but we've also heard of some of the challenges that need to be addressed. So we will continue to work in this direction and also to engage the global private sector um, to support this process and to invest in forest conservation and restoration. I want to thank all of you. I think that as, as you just said, Vice President um, and also you, Secretary General, um, this panel was a great example of such multi-stakeholder dialogue. And even in this short conversation, I think we've already have a few nuggets that we can take forward. Thank you all and stay tuned for the next session uh, to meet the ecopreneurs.